So in 4-2, you can solve the system of equations by using substitution or by using substitution or you can graph. So this you can use either way. You have to figure out which way is more convenient for you. Uh, the best way is just to look at it and to figure it out, which I might show you how to do later. So if we look at this first one, we have an equation right here, x plus y equals 5 and 5 tenths. And then we have 8 times x minus 4 times y equals 3 and 5 tenths. So of course, you, uh, I hope they, they solved and got both equations in y equals mx plus b format, which is the slope-intercept format. And then they went ahead and graphed. And then they found out where the points intersect is going to be that one solution. And that's how they know, uh, that's how they estimate it to get the ordered pair the x coordinate and the y coordinate, which is the answer based off of graphing. Now, if you were to solve uh, both of these equations, uh, well, if you solve both of the equations, one slope is gonna be positive and one slope is going to be negative. I guess I can go ahead and solve the equations. So the first one, since I'm not gonna be graphing, I'll solve them. So the first one we have x plus y equals 5 and 5 tenths. So I want to move my x to the other side of the equal sign. So here's my equal sign. I'm going to subtract x from both sides. This is going to cancel out. And then I have y equals, and I like to put my x first. So it'll be negative x and then plus 5 and 5 tenths. So that's my first equation. And then my second equation, I'm going to put it up here. It says 8 times x minus 4 times y equals three and five tenths. So I wanna put this in slope intercept format. So I'm going to first move my eight times X uh, minus, so since it's connected to the Y through subtraction, if I wanna move that whole term to the other side, remember a term is separated by plus or minus sign, I'm going to undo this, this eight, this coefficient eight times X. Now I'm not gonna be dividing both sides by X, I'm actually gonna subtract both sides by eight times X since I'm moving the whole term and not just the coefficient. So if I was moving the coefficient, yes, I would divide both sides by eight, but I'm moving the entire term, which is the eight and the X, so I'm gonna subtract it. Since it's positive eight times X, I need to subtract eight times X from the other side and not divide just eight, okay? That's going to cancel out because if you have eight xylophones, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you take away all eight, guess what? You're going to be left with zero. So that is going to cancel this out right here. Then I'm going to bring down my minus four times y, my equal sign, and then I'm going to put my negative eight times x because in the slope intercept format, mx is first. And then I'm going to put my plus three and five tenths. Okay, now I want to get Y alone on the right side by itself. So now I'm going to look and see how is the Y, what do I need to move? I need to just move negative four. So since I just need to move negative four and four is connected to Y through multiplication because it says negative four times Y, I need to divide both sides because I want to undo this negative four times Y. I want to move the four, just the four. So since I'm trying to just move the four, I want to divide both sides by negative four. And I'm going to divide every term on the other side, on the right side of my equal sign by negative four. So to maintain equivalency. So I'm going to divide this term. So this is a term. Negative eight times x is a term. A term is separated by a plus or minus sign. So negative eight times x is a term. And I'm going to divide that by negative four. Okay, make this bigger. And then I'm going to divide my other term by the same number, negative four. Now I could put one big minus uh, division line and put a negative four once, but I wanna do it like this. So I'm gonna cancel out this negative four because negative four divided by negative four equals one. Okay, anything divided by itself equals one. I'm left with just y. Then I bring down my equal sign. Then I have negative eight times X divided by negative four. A negative divided by a negative equals a positive. So I have uh, 
2 times x and then I have 3 and 5 tenths divided by 4 8700 so that's going to be a negative number because a positive divided by a negative is negative and that's going to be 0 and 875 thousandths so be so that's my other equation so since this slope is positive and this slope is negative the points will eventually run into each other at the same time okay so when one slope is positive and one is negative so that's graphing that's what we uh, reviewed in the last lesson 4-2 so this lesson is talking about substitution so if you look right here you want to solve for the variable so so i'm going to go over an example of how to substitute so right here i have a pretty fairly easy equation so two easy equations so i have x equals y plus six for my first equation so this is the first equation and my second equation says x plus y equals 10. my first equation already have x on one side of the equal sign by itself, I'm going to go ahead and use that one to substitute into my other equation. A quick reminder, two plus five is equal to seven, right? Whatever is on the left side has the same exact value as what's on the right side because they're separated by equal sign. So that's what you have to understand for this lesson. So because I have the X on the left side of the equal sign, and it's equivalent to y plus 6. I can go ahead and substitute y plus 6 into my other equation instead of x. So I have my equation right here. So my first equation, I'm going to write it bigger. y equals y plus 6. And my second equation, I'm going to write it right here. I have x plus y equals 10. So since I know that x is equivalent to y plus 6 and this equation I'm going to get rid of this x and I'm going to put this in for x instead of instead of just the x because the goal is to get rid of the x because you only can solve when you have one variable so if we have two variables we can't solve for the variable because we have two so the goal is to use a substitution so that you only have one variable so if I, instead of putting this X, I put what X is equivalent to, then I can solve for one variable. So I'm going to rewrite this. Instead of X plus Y equals 10, I'm going to write Y plus 6. So I substituted this value in, Y plus 6, into my equation for X because they are equivalent. So I got rid of the X and I substituted in Y plus 6. Then I put my plus sign, so that's my plus sign, so I'm finishing my substitution process, plug and chug. I put my plus sign, then I put my y, and then I put my equal sign, and then I put my 10. And now I'm going to solve for y, and then I'll have what y is equivalent to. So I'm going to combine my like terms, so if I have one yo-yo, and I add another yo-yo, I'm going to have 2y, or y two times, so I have combine my like terms and I'm going to put plus 6 and I'm going to put my equal sign and then my 10 and then I'm going to subtract so I'm using the order operations backwards so to solve for the variable so since I'm adding 6 I want to subtract 6 from both sides to make and I'm doing it to both sides to maintain equivalency 10 minus 6 is 4 I bring down that equal sign and I bring down my 2 times y and then I want y on one side of the equal sign by itself, so I need to divide both sides by 2 to get y. 2 is going to cancel out. Then I have y is equal to 4 divided by 2, which is 2. So now that I know that y is equivalent to 2, I can go back to my other equation or into a, one of the equations, which I'm going to use the second one. So the second equation says x plus y equals 10. So if I know that y is equivalent to 2, I can substitute 2 in for y, and then I can figure out what x is equal to by solving for the variable. Since I, so since I have x plus 2, I can subtract 2 from both sides. The 2 will cancel out, and I have x is equivalent to 10 minus 2, which is 8. So now that I, that I have my x coordinate and I have my y coordinate, I can make an ordered pair, and that will be the answer. But you always want to check to make sure it's correct by substituting that x coordinate and that y coordinate back into the equations to make sure 
that both equations are equal so to, or to make sure that the constants are the same. So my ordered pair, remember x comes before y, it says x is 8, so I'm going to put 8 right here, and it says y is 2, so I'll put 2 here. And that will be the answer if, when I check, I get a true statement. So I'm going to go ahead and check. So I will substitute these ordered pairs, this value 8 for x, and this value 2 for y, into both of my equations, and to make sure that the equations are true. So I'm going to start with my first equation. I have x plus y equals 10. So this is my first equation. I'm going to substitute 8 in for x, so 8, and 2 in for y, so it'll be 8 plus 2. 8 plus 2 is 10, and since 10 is equal to 10, I know that this is a true equation. So now I need to get my other equation, which is my second one. So this one checks out. Now I want to get, well, this, that's the second equation. Now I want to check with my first equation which says, I'm going to squeeze it right here, x is equal to y plus 6. So I'm going to substitute 8 in for x, because this is my x coordinate. Then I'm going to put my equal sign, and then I'm going to put my y in for, my y coordinate in for y. My y is 2. Now I'm going to add plus 6. So since 2 plus 6 equals 8, and 8 is equivalent to 8, this ordered pair works for both of the equations so I know that this is the correct solution. Since we substitute the ordered pair 8 for the x-coordinate, 2 for the y-coordinate into the equations, into both original equations, and saw that the ordered pair made the equations true, we can conclude that this, this ordered pair is the only or the, the one solution that works for this uh, system, for these two equations. So this is the only point where the lines will intersect at this point, and that point will be uh, 8, 2. So that will be the one solution where the two points, where the two lines intersect. I'm going to use the substitution method for uh, this, the two equations that I have here. So this is my equation 1 y equals 2 times x minus 1, and this is my equation 2. Uh, 2 times x plus 3 times y equals negative 7. So the first thing I want to do is use substitution. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute my equation 1 into my equation 2 since I already have y, what y is equivalent to. So my equation 1 says y is equivalent to 2 times x minus 1. So what that means is, instead of putting, instead of y in my second equation right here, I'm going to go ahead and substitute what y is equivalent to, which is 2 times x minus 1, into my second equation for y. So my first, so my second equation says 2 times x plus 3 times y is equal to negative 7. So since my first equation says y equals 2 times x minus 1, instead of y in my second equation, so instead of putting y, instead of putting 3 times y, I'm going to put 3 times what y is equivalent to, which is 2 times x minus 1. So instead of 3 times y, I put 3 times what y is equivalent to, and I got that information from my first equation. And then I'm going to just bring down everything else so I'm going to put my 2 times x put everything else as is I just substituted what y was equivalent to then for y and then I put my equal sign and then after the equal sign I put my minus 7 and then we have to so we just plugged and now it's time to chug to figure out what is the value of x now that we only have one variable in our equation we can solve for the variable figure out the value for the variable x and once we have the value for x, we can substitute x into one of the equations and figure out y. And that's what you need in order to write the order pair. You need your x coordinate and your y coordinate. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is apply the distributive property. So I'm going to come over here to the side, or we can just apply it here. So I need I have three times the difference of two times x and one. So I need to distribute that three into both of my terms. So I literally have the difference of 2 times x and 1 3 times. So that's going to give me 6 times x 
and then I have three times negative one, which is negative three. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bring everything down that I did not use, which is this, th well, I used three because I distributed that into both terms. So it's gonna be the, so I use this right here to get six times X minus three. I'm gonna bring my plus sign down. I'm gonna bring my two times X down. I'm gonna bring my equal sign down and I'm gonna bring down my negative seven. All right, now I'm ready to combine like terms first, and then I want to use the order operations backwards to solve for my variable. So my like terms are going to, remember, like terms have to have the same variable raised to the same power. So since I have x raised to the first power and I have x raised to the first power, I'm going to go ahead and combine those. So if I have two xylophones and I add six more xylophones, that's a total of eight xylophones. So I have eight times x. Then I'm going to bring down that minus three. Then I'm gonna bring down the equal sign and I'm gonna bring down that minus seven. Now I wanna use the order operation. So the order operations, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division from left to right, addition and subtraction from left to right. So since we're undoing, we wanna go use the order operations backwards. So I need to add and subtract first. So I want to undo this minus three first. I'm gonna undo minus three. So to undo subtracting three, we need to add three. So I'm gonna add three to both sides. This is going to cancel out and I'm left. So basically I'm adding this is going to I'm going to be left with eight times X. I'm going to bring down my equal sign that equals zero because they're additive inverse. They cancel out. Now I have negative seven and I need to add three. So so negative seven plus three is going to give me negative four. And then I'm going to go ahead and continue to solve for my variable. So I need to get this coefficient off. I'm finished with addition and subtraction. Now I'm going to move on to multiplication and division. So I am going to, since this says 8 times x, I'm dividing both sides by 8. This 8 is going to cancel out, and I'm left with 1 times x, which is just x, is equal to negative 4 eighths, and that simplifies to negative 1 half. So my value for x is negative 1 half. So I'm going to take that value for x, substitute it into my equation. So I'm going to take my other equation or either one. I'm going to take my equation, my first equation, y equals 2 times x minus 1. I'm going to put this value in for x into my equation to figure out what y is. So, because right now, I have two variables. I have a variable y and a variable x. When you solve for a variable, you're solving for one variable. So because I have two variables, it's creating a problem. So that's where you will substitute and eliminate one of the variables and then uh, plug and chug to figure out your answer. So I'm going to substitute negative one half into my equation for X because that's what X was equivalent to. So I'm going to put Y equals two times instead of two times X, I'm going to put two times negative one half and then I'm going to put minus one. So I'm going to multiply two times negative one half, which is going to give me negative one. And then I have to bring down my negative one. And then that's going to give me negative one plus negative one, which is negative two. And then y is equal to negative two. So now that I have my x coordinate negative one half and my y coordinate negative two, I can go ahead and substitute these values into the both equations to see if it's true. And if it's true, I know I have exactly one solution. All right. So because my equations are not exactly the same, or let's go ahead and substitute. So my first equation, so this is me checking my work. My first equation says y equals 2 times x minus 1. Uh, I'm going to substitute my ordered pair in. Let's go ahead and erase this. So my ordered pair, I'm going to substitute my ordered pair negative one half two, negative two into the equation. So I have for, this is the x coordinate, this is the y coordinate. I'm going to put negative two is equal to two times negative one half minus one. So I substituted my x coordinate and my y coordinate into the equation. I'm going to check to see if it's true. So my right side or my left side says it's negative two. So I want to evaluate the right side and see if I get that same negative two, which means this so, uh, this ordered pair works for this equation. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute this in. It's going to cancel out. I'm going to have negative one, uh, and then I can rewrite it as a plus negative one. And negative one plus negative one is negative two. 
And since negative 2 is equal to negative 2, I know this ordered pair works. Now I want to check for my other equation. So my second equation, which is right here, 2 times x plus 3 times y equals negative 7. So I'm going to substitute that same ordered pair in uh, to see if I get a true equation. So I have 2 times x. x is negative 1 half. Then I have plus plus, then I have 3 times y, instead of 3 times y, I'm going to put 3 times negative 2, then I'm going to put my equal sign, and then I'm going to put my negative 7. So my right side of the equal sign says that the value should be negative 7. So if both sides have a value of negative 7, I can say that this uh, equate or this ordered pair is the one solution for this equation using the elimination method. All right, so right here I have 2 times negative 1. That's going to give 2 times negative 1 half, which is negative 1. And then I have a plus sign. And then I have 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6. Because I have two signs, I'm going to go ahead and put parentheses. So now I have negative 1 plus negative 6. So negative 1, negative 1 plus negative 6 is negative 7. So this second equation, this order pair, negative, negative 1 half, negative 2 makes my second equation true. So that means that this is the correct location where my two lines will intersect. So these two lines, if I were to graph these on a coordinate plane, these two lines will intersect at the ordered pair negative 1 half, negative 2. So this is the solution, the answer that you will use for this problem.